This is a typical center channel speaker, and it's designed wrong. That's because it's designed to make it sound really good if you're sitting directly in front of it. But when you're lounging out on the side of the speaker, not so much. You can't really hear it. And that's because of the way that it's designed. See what they did is they designed it function so that it fits perfectly underneath your TV and inside cabinets and things of that nature. But unfortunately, the performance really suffers. But what if we could break some of those rules? Like this, come up with a small compact speaker that looks the same as the other one, but has none of those off axis issues, meaning you can hear it the same whether you're sitting in front of it or on the side. Yeah, a speaker like that, it'd break all the rules. In fact, I think we'd call it the rule breaker. Me and Elliot Designs came up with this idea and we had three goals for this build. The first goal is to make it small and compact, something you can put just about anywhere. Two, we wanted to make it affordable. That's right, something say under $100 for the cost of the components. And three, we wanted to fix those off axis issues and let you sit just about anywhere and hear it exactly the same as if you were sitting directly in front of it. Now for this to work, we had to pick the right components. Enter the TCP-115. It fits in a very small compact box and gets us a low enough extension to be crossed over with the mains so it can be used as a center channel speaker. Best of all, it fits within our budget. For the high end, we decided against a traditional tweeter. Instead of using a traditional tweeter, we decided to choose this BMR driver. Now there's a reason for this and really the reason why this design works. Why exactly? Well, keep watching. I'll tell you just a little bit. For this project, I thought I'd use some nice solid cherry. It is rough sawn, but this board only cost me $10 at the mill. This is where having a planer really saves you a lot of money. Is this board already planed and not rough cut? Would it cost me probably closer to 100? Thank you, DeWalt. Now I could absolutely use a standard rectangular box like pretty much every other speaker looks like. But why when you have something as awesome as the X-Tool D1 20 watt laser at your disposal? It's simply used. Just set your laser to the depth of the wood, then get your crosshairs right where you want to start cutting, and then sit back, have a snack, relax, and watch the laser do the work for you. Having this laser on hand was really nice. It was like having an employee there working they didn't have to pay. And I got to still go do other things while it was working. It was pretty amazing actually. And the design worked out flawlessly. It allows me to have internal bracing that I don't have to worry about later. And because I was able to cut dowel holes out, it's gonna make lining this up and gluing much, much easier.
Here you're gonna see that one of the pieces is a solid flat back wall. Why is that? That's because the BMR itself that we're using for the high end isn't sealed. It needs to have its own sealed compartment. And that's what this is for. Now these holes worked out perfectly with these dowels to line everything up. I did go all the way through the rear of the speaker, that way the dowels could protrude out the back so I didn't have to have perfectly sized dowels. Now the front baffle might look like it's just being placed in place, but it's not. It actually does have some laser engraved dowel spots so that it's lined up perfectly. And that was huge because it's the same thickness as the BMR, so everything sits flush. Since the BMR is in its own enclosure, we do need to drill some holes to get the speaker wire through. I drill just a little bit bigger than the actual speaker wire itself and make sure to seal that with some hot glue or in my case expanding Gorilla Glue works really well.
Of course, I could have built this like a traditional center channel speaker and made it just rectangular. In fact, the plans down in the description below have the ability to do that for those of you that don't have a laser. But here's the deal. I think this laser was absolutely worth the cost because while it was working, I got to spend time with my family inside. And that time spent with my family is so much more valuable than that machine would ever have costed me. Not to mention, it looks really good. But the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter how it looks if it doesn't perform. So let's go ahead and test it against a typical center channel speaker that I have in the house. In fact, it's even gonna use some of the same drivers that we used in this build and see the performance difference. Is there any? Let's find out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Dayton Audio first. It's on axis response, I don't really care what it looks like. What I wanna find out is how it does off axis. So as we start turning this, let's go ahead and stop around 30 degrees. Uh, 30 degrees, we're gonna see some major issues going on right around 1.3, 1.5 kil kilohertz. Uh, it's 15 decibels down, that's far. Uh, that You're going to have really trouble hearing uh, that frequency range. Really everything from one kilohertz uh, down to, up to 2500 kilohertz, we're starting to see uh, some deconstructive waves going on. But I think we'll see even more as we go further. So let's go ahead and take a look at 45 degrees. Okay, 45 degrees is even worse. Uh, we're starting to see uh, that issue that we had at 1.5 kilohertz is now at 1.2 kilohertz. And now we're having another issue uh, going on at, uh, looks like 2300 kilohertz. Here's the deal, everything really, uh, from one kilohertz to 2,500 kilohertz, we're having some major deconstructive waves. And that is a huge issue because that is an area that contains a lot of details in movies. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the rule breaker and see if it does any better. Here's the on-axis response of the rule breaker. You will notice it does have a slight rise to the frequency response. That's by design. And you're gonna see that when we start going off axis with this. Now I want to show you this. This is only 15 degrees off axis, but I want to show you just how linear it's staying. Now here's the rule breaker at 30 degrees and it's absolutely an unbelievable response. Uh, once again, we're looking at a very linear response with very little deviation, just two to three decibels in most spots uh, until you get after really about uh, 12 kilohertz or so, and then maybe even 15 kilohertz. And then you're starting to see some deviation, but really that's to be expected from any type of speaker at those frequencies and at this angle. But what this does show you is that everywhere between zero and 30 degrees, you're basically getting the exact same sound uh, from this speaker. It's pretty phenomenal. And this is 45 degrees from the rule breaker. And you're gonna see once again, that this speaker is absolutely listenable to, unlike Dayton Audio, which really was having major issues. This one, uh, there's some issues right around six kilohertz, but other than that, this is a really great response, especially for being in a position that you'll probably never be listening to the speaker at. Now you saw the test, the rule breaker performed significantly better, but they shared the exact same woofers in these. So why does the rule breaker so much better than the Dayton Audio? Let me explain. Before I can explain exactly why this performs better, I gotta go over some basics of audio theory. Normal human hearing is anywhere from 20 hertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. And every one of those numbers in between is considered a frequency. And those frequencies have a wavelength associated with it. The higher you go up in frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Vice versa, the lower you go down in frequency, the much larger the wavelength. So when we take a look at this Dayton Audio, we see it has a traditional tweeter. The problem with a traditional tweeter is it has to cross over somewhere between 3500 and 1500 hertz, somewhere typically in that range. And that means these woofers are going to be playing everything up to that. Well, that's where things get dicey. You see, this type of speaker was actually designed to sit like this. And when you go off to the side sitting like this, these woofers stay the same distance. But when we flip it back on its side, well, guess what? The woofer distance as we go further to the left and right changes. And because the frequency at which these cross over is so small in the 1500 to 3500 Hertz, well, it affects that frequency response when we go off axis and that's a problem. And this is why this BMR is so special. This BMR 
allows us to cross over significantly lower. Now we did a distortion profile on this and this didn't start having problems with distortion until about 300 Hertz. And by doing that, these wavelengths right here are so long that it doesn't interfere with our off axis response, meaning that the BMR pretty much does most of the work with this doing the low end. And that's why this significantly outperformed the normal center channel speaker. So we know that we got our off axis response and we know that we got our size correct as it's very, very small. It's even smaller compared. In fact, it's even smaller than this Dayton audio right here. So we got the first two down, but what about cost? How much does it cost to build one of these? So each one of the TCPs are right around $15 and the BMRs are around $26. Let's just go ahead and say crossover components are around $24. So all in, you're around $80 for the major components of this build. Not bad. In fact, cheap enough that really anyone could build this. Every single person should have a speaker like this in their house. There is no reason to have to worry about having a center channel like this anymore when you can do something as simple as this. And this is a really simple build. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the build plans down below. So if you're interested in building one, give yourself a shot at DIY. I think you'll be surprised. Since I only primarily used one tool for this project, I think it's only fitting that I spend some time talking about my thoughts on the Xtool D120 Watt Pro Laser. I love it. I've used uh, five different lasers now, and this has been my favorite one. It comes with its own software, so you can start cutting right away. And inside that software, it even comes uh, with feeds and speeds already set up for different types of materials, so you're not quite guessing. Uh, and uh, honestly, I couldn't have been happier with the way this project came out. I could have built this just like a typical rectangle if I wanted to, but where's the fun in that? And honestly, I think that lasers, uh, 3D printers, CNC's, they're going to become more commonplace in the DIY world. And I can completely see why. Uh, being able to uh, laser engrave the back of that uh, metal plate that says Rule Breaker and Toys DIY Audio was just really, really cool. And the truth of the matter is, uh, once I had my feeds and speeds set up, I had a camera out there looking at uh, the machine and I was able to leave it that time that I spent with my family versus staying out in the workshop was so much more valuable to me than any cost of any laser. So I'm going to go ahead and throw uh, some links in the description. So if you are interested in getting a laser, you can take a look at the X tool ones. Uh, it is definitely one that I recommend. All right, guys, this is Toys DIY Audio and I'm out.